Thanks for tuning in. This is Stomper Be Thompin'. And if you are ATV shopping and you happen to be looking at Yamaha's lineup, there's a chance you're wondering whether the Grizzly 700 is as good of a utility machine as it is slaying trails. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you some winching. I'm going to show you some cart pulling with a, a, an ATV specific cart full of wood. I'm going to show you some hill climbs. I'm going to show you the differential lock, and I'll also show you a few log pulls. On top of that, I'll walk you through the features on this machine that I think are specific to making it a very good workhorse. I'll give you a very quick overview of this ATV cart that we bought from Tractor Supply. It's manufactured by a company called Ohio Steel Industries, although I bet it's just made in China. It's made specifically for ATVs and to navigate a little bit rougher terrain than your traditional lawn cart. It's got pretty high ground clearance in the rear so you can navigate ruts and hop up over logs and stuff. It's basically just a boxed steel frame with a large composite bin and they provide instructions where you can get these little one buys and make these racks just to help keep things like logs and stuff in place. It's got a very simple connection system. You've got a pin which holds this collar in place. You pop this pin out, you slide the collar forward, you drop it up and over the ball, you slide the collar back and you drop the pin through. So it stays connected to your ball and you can go through deep ditches and ravines and things and it'll tilt for you. It'll also tilt side to side. So if you're on any off camber terrain, you don't have to worry about that. And here's the dump feature. You just place your foot on here, dump the cart, no problem. And then to put it back down in, doing this one handed, forgive me. You just locate it, clicks right into place. I highly recommend this cart. It was about 300 bucks, but it's been really good to us so far. All right, I've got the ATV in four wheel drive low. Diff lock is off. I'm gonna attempt this hill climb. Definitely required a bit of wheel spin. Okay, this is the same hill with four wheel drive lock. I'm gonna see if I just can't go slower. Much more control, baby! If hauling items is important to you, then check out the racks on this baby. They're both made of steel and they're both finished in this black, like kind of matte crinkled material. I don't know if it's powder coat or painted to be honest with you, but the front rack holds 110 pounds and the rear rack holds 198 pounds. This machine also comes with a two inch hitch receiver. More on that a little bit later on. I'm pretty sure that all you hunters could appreciate how wide and strong the rear rack is. Here I am obviously simulating a fresh 12 point and cleanup afterward is really easy. Spray down the plastics and the racks and you're done. If anybody's wondering, I'm running the ITP Terracross RTs. They're radial construction, typical all terrains, and I've got them set at five PSI front and rear. Onboard storage for these Grizzlies is pretty darn good. On the right hand side of the driver, you've got a screw on screw off lid with a little tether system so you don't lose it. This one is going to be your most dry compartment. Good for fitting in like cell phone keys and things like that, but not big enough to fit like a bottle of water or anything like that. Compartment number two is right in front of your lap. Now this one is going to be your second driest compartment. It's definitely water resistant and it'll keep like a, a small rain out but if you're bashing through mud there is a chance that moisture can get in here this pocket is very deep you can easily fit a couple of tow ropes several bottles of water no problem extra jackets hoodies ponchos some small tools and things like that keep in mind though that that apartment is right on top of the engine and it does get pretty warm your third compartment is right behind the ATV, and this one is by far the least water and dust proof. It's got a large gap at the top, which can let water and dust in pretty easily. But this one's a very sizable compartment. I fill it up with things like tow straps. I've got a 20 foot tow rope, a 10 foot tow strap, a few soft shackles, and plenty of room for more.
If you're working in the dark, the Grizzly's got you covered. The instrument cluster is extremely bright and you have three different settings you can change for the brightness of that. Also, the headlights are very bright in my opinion. The two low beams are LEDs, very bright. And the top light there is a halogen and of course that swivels with the handlebars. Here's a clip of the headlights in action. So here we are cruising down a suburban street with the lights off and I'm gonna do low beams and then high beams. Here's low. And here's high beams. Fuel range on these hogs is okay. You've got a 4.8 gallon tank and reports online are showing that people are getting everywhere between 70 to about 100 miles per tank. Obviously, depending on what you're using the machine for. The fuel gauge on these definitely leaves a lot to be desired. You've got four bars that show you your fuel level and the final bar at the bottom will start blinking when you've got approximately one gallon left. That's to kind of mimic a reserve. All the Grizzlies come set up to accept a winch in the front with relative ease. I purchased one of the winch kits from Rocky Mountain ATV. I went with the Warren VRX 25S. It's a winch I'm familiar with and have had no issues with either. Install is mostly a breeze. I have a video on that you can check out. And the battery compartment up top is very accessible just by popping off this black plastic piece and you've got the battery right there to make hook up that much easier. I'm in neutral and this is all the winch. I've got a 700 pound, 700 pound ATV, 190 pound person, and a cart full of wet logs. All right, we are starting from a standstill differential is locked. I'm in four low. Let's see if I can make it up this hill with a full cart. Oh my gosh. Come on, baby. Uh-oh. Digging ruts. Digging ruts. There we go. Give her a bump. Nope. Digging in deeper. Okay, I've got to make this hill. Those four lock took me a couple runs at that. All Grizzly 700s come equipped with electronic power steering. It is a single setting, so you cannot change the sensitivity of it, and it only works when the engine is running. Most people praise the electronic power steering on these, especially in low speed settings or situations. I have heard a couple of people complain about how light the steering feels at high speeds, but in my opinion, this really hasn't been too much of an issue. One of the things that Yamaha is famous for is their Ultramatic CVTs, and every sport utility that Yamaha makes comes with these Ultramatic CVTs. What makes it different is that it has a centrifugal clutch which means that there's always belt tension, which means when you're going downhill, you won't get a transmission that all of a sudden starts to free spool on you where you have to blip the throttle to re-engage that belt tension. This is obviously great for towing and hauling heavy loads, especially downhill. Do keep in mind, you've got to put it in four wheel drive if you want engine braking at all wheels and axles. One thing to consider about these Grizzly 700s is that they are two inches wider than both the Kodiak 450 and the Kodiak 700. That two inches might not seem like a lot on paper, but in my experience, if you are navigating really tight trails, if you're having to go through narrow gates, narrow trees, 
then that's gonna be something to consider. It does also widen the turn radius, but in my experience, real world driving out here on pretty tight trails, it's not that much of an issue. All of these Grizzly 700s come with a two inch hitch receiver, and you can see that it attaches at four points, two on the sides of the frame and two up on the bottom of the frame there. And that gives you a very centrally located pulling point. So in my opinion, all these ATVs that have utility in the name should come with a two inch hitch receiver. That's what most people have on their trucks and SUVs. Additionally, it allows for quick swapping of various type of imp implements. If you wanna put on a hook, a tow point, or a ball mount, whatever you want, it's a quick, easy change. All Grizzly 700s also come with a locking front differential. Of course, the rear end is locked. There's no turf mode. I haven't seen turf mode on an ATV. You might have to step up to something like a UTV to get something like that. But you've got very basic four wheel drive, single button engagement. I believe that that gives you a limited slip front differential, but with a quick change of the toggle, you also get diff lock. Right next to your keyed ignition is also a 12 volt outlet with a little rubber stopper to keep it nice and dry. Very convenient to have on the trail. I really like the way that Yamaha does their brakes. On the Grizzlies, you get hydraulics all around and disc brakes at each corner. The Kodiak 450 and the Kodiak 700 have a cable actuated rear brake and it is a single wet disc inside the rear differential. Great for longevity, great for uh, guaranteed use even in deep mud but I really prefer the Grizzly setup with discs and hydraulics. I also prefer having two brakes up on your handlebars. The right controls your front and the left controls your rear brakes. Like every other ATV out there, you've got a foot brake for the rear only as well. In my opinion, this comes in handy not only for trail riding when you're leaning very aggressively, you've always got access to a quick brake and you can control them individually. But this brake setup is also really helpful when you're doing utility work and especially if you're on off camber terrain or hills or descents or anything like that. If you're on and off the machine quite a bit and you're going in and out of park to low gear to reverse, either side you can quickly grab a brake lever and stop the machine should it start to roll on you so that's it for the utility review of the grizzly 700 if you got any questions about the machine please just let me know and thanks for watching